All right, let me talk about this friendly bacteria probiotic. The story behind this product, which I was really impressed, uh, there was a scientist, a Japanese scientist, who was experimenting with certain microbes. And he basically, um, at the end of the day, uh, took these various uh, microbes and tossed them in the back of his lab into the grass. And he came back a couple of days and he noticed that right where he tossed these microbes, there was a huge um, grass, dark green growth of grass. And he started to go, wait a second, what's going on with that? So he started experimenting with microbes in different combinations of microbes with combining certain bacteria with yeast, okay? And he found there was a really good symbiotic relationship with certain microbes. And that was the origin of this product. So when you take this product, not only does it survive the stomach acid, it goes through the body, but you can start to grow uh, the balance of not just bacteria, but yeast, friendly yeast that you need to make certain types of healthy uh, things like B vitamins, right? So your microbes um, help you make vitamins. They help your immune system. They help um, your uh, digestion of food. They help make bile salts. They do a lot. So you would just take a cap full of this right before bed. I always recommend starting with maybe a half of a cap full and like to put a little bit of water, slug it down, and then go to sleep. So this is a wonderful thing to help build back your bacteria if you had an antibiotic and just to support your digestive system. And you can also take this and dilute it and put it as a spray and spray it on uh, different parts of your house that have mold. You can even put it in your septic tank to get rid of odors. I mean, it does a lot. So I want to talk about the relationship between the friendly bacteria you have in your gut and around your body, as well as the friendly fungus. And so I want to talk about this relationship because um, people think that your microbiome, all your microbes are just primarily bacteria when you have a lot of different species going on. You have viruses, you have different types of funguses like yeast. And so they're all supposed to live together in harmony. But anytime you learn a new topic, it's very important to define the words within that topic to really understand the definitions of these basic words. So let me go through a few things. And so all the bacteria in your gut, the friendly bacteria is called the microbiome. And all the friendly fungus is called the mycobiome. One of the challenges with studying fungus, in which by the way, it's not very studied because it's very hard to culture fungus. And so the friendly bacteria and the friendly fungus remain friendly until the environment changes. They have the potential to become pathogenic. So they can actually morph into pathogenic strains and create a lot of problems inside our bodies. Now there's three new words I'm gonna define. And this basically relates to the relationship that you have with these microbes. You have mutualism, which you have two organisms, two different species that are benefiting from each other, right? They're exchanging with each other. And so we give our microbes a place to stay. We give them space and they give us immune protection. They give us vitamins. They give us a lot of other things. So that's called mutualism. Then you have something called commensalism. Okay, that's where one species benefits while the other one neither benefits nor is harmful. So that would be maybe someone that lives with you that doesn't necessarily take up too much space. They're not paying for rent. They're not doing much to help you, but they're also not doing anything to harm you as well. So that's called commensalism. Then we have another relationship called parasitism. Okay. This is where you have someone that takes, but doesn't give back, but also creates some destruction or harm. So for example, if you get a parasite in your gut, they're going to rob all your nutrition. They don't protect your immune system. They just deplete you of nutrients and they create other problems. And that could be someone that comes to your house and actually rips you off or steals something. They take something, but they don't give you anything back. And so in our bodies, we have these different relationships with microbes that can either help us do nothing or harm us, just like we have in life, right? But the main point I want to bring up about this video, because people think that all funguses are bad, 
what are some benefits that the fungus gives us? Well, it just so happens when you get treated with an antibiotic, you end up getting a fungal infection like candida. But when you get treated with an antifungal infections and it kills off all the fungus, you end up getting a bacterial infection. So that bacteria becomes pathogenic. Uh, one bacterial infection would be E. coli, for example. See, normally we're supposed to have a certain amount of E. coli that lives in our body that is not unfriendly until the environment changes. And so one big function that the fungus has is to keep the bacteria in check. So you don't actually have these fungus turning to the dark side, becoming pathogenic or overgrowing in large amounts. Same thing with uh, viruses. You have viruses in your gut that actually keep the bacteria in check. And also the bacteria keep the fungus in check. So they all work together. And so the really important thing we need to learn from this is that anytime you use an antibiotic or antifungal or anything that destroys the microorganisms living in our body, it comes with a package. You start getting unfriendly bacteria, unfriendly fungus, unfriendly parasites. And so it's very, very important to recognize the function of these microbes and take care of them. Now, if you have a candida infection or you have a fungus growing in your toenails or whatever, uh, there's various things that you can do. Uh, instead of taking an antifungal, which has side effects, there's things that you can take that have no side effects, but they can definitely help control the pathogenic uh, fungus as well as the pathogenic bacteria. And the number one thing that will do that would be oregano oil. Now you can take that as a supplement or you can actually even take the oil and put it into it like a neti pot and infuse it into the sinuses if there's a fungus infection in your sinuses. Uh, another really interesting uh, natural antifungal would be gemnema, which normally is a plant that helps diabetes. In fact, if you ever take gemnema as a herb and you chew on it, it'll actually block the taste of sweet. So if you're consuming anything with sugar, you won't be able to taste that sugar. So I've done videos on that before. So oregano oil is really, really powerful. Gemnema is a really good one, as well as taking a friendly fungus. And there's two that I recommend. Saccharomyces cerevisia is one of them. And the other one is Saccharomyces boulardii. Both of these are friendly yeast and they're even added to certain probiotics. And I put a link down below if you want more information about that. Anyway, I think this is an important topic, the relationship between bacteria and fungus and the importance of keeping them in check so they don't turn on you and become pathogenic. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.